Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna sit down. I know uh, everybody who is speaking has been uh, all been standing up, so um, yeah, I, I can't do that. <laughs> so uh, today, uh, I have uh, some tips from a fellow developer, okay? And um, basically, uh, it's just my life throughout, right? Up to now, and what I want to do later on in life. Okay, so let's just talk about me. Um, I have been a developer for professionally for about uh, 14 to 15 years and uh, unprofessionally, which uh, just doing uh, programming uh, for about, let's say, another 15 years. Wait, yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's um, altogether about 30 years of programming and uh, it's been a long time, right? But um, yeah, it's quite fun. Um, as as um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, Michael has said, right? Um, I've just got a stroke, right? And um, that, that really brought a few new perspectives uh, in life, right? And, you know, of course, everything to do with uh, programming, right? Um, so let me go through with you what I've done and what I plan to do later on. So, um, how many of you know what this is? Can anyone guess? Huh? Huh? Uh, what? Uh, no, 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 it's not. It, it's a programming language, but done something else, right? It's really, really old, right? It, it's turtle, right? It's turtle, or, or what do you call algo, right? And um, this is a very, very early language, right? Way back in 1980 something, right? Yeah, and that's, that's when I first started programming, right? Or, or maybe not programming, but designing stuff, right? Just, just playing around with uh, numbers and all that. And it was fun, it was fun. Right, but it was it was just drawing number, uh, drawing you know, uh, uh, um, pictures and stuff like that. Right, so it was very boring. Right, and then going on. <laughs> Anybody knows this? All this a uh, uh, <laughs> lot of the uh, legend legends of the red dragon. Right. Uh, these are data professionals, ACS, we have, uh, uh, um, what, what do you call that? Um, yeah, something. Uh, there is, a, there is a, a Raffles and all that, right? So many years ago, right, back in 1988, uh, 1988 yes, 19, uh, 1988, uh, we started all of this up and running, right? Of course, it has a uh, lifespan. Right, but um, and we still um, gather on Facebook and everything and talk about talk about this many years ago, right? But these these are some of these things, and and I really love Legend of the Red Dragon. <laughs> I'm sure uh, some of you have uh, looked at it and uh, have played with it too, right? But there are, there are definitely more, right? So yeah, but then. Um, I went to all these sites, right, and, um, you know, dollop and everything, and I got all these um, books to read up and all that, right, which is all in text form, actually. Uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have a PDF or anything, right? And that's how I actually got it started in uh, programming language, right? And... Okay, and, and these things over here, right? One is uh, Vis Visual Basic, and the other one is Pascal, right? I'm sure a lot of you have le uh, learned Pascal, have learned Basic, but this is really, really old, you know, uh, uh, using DOS from the, on the time being, right? So it's really, really old. But um, that's really got me started in programming. Right? So I was all of like, like you guys, right? Just learning programming and all that. 
Um, and then, you know, carrying on. <laughs> um, uh, C++, I think, came out, uh, the book itself, right? The programming book itself came out in 1983, if I'm not wrong, 1983. Um, and it, it grew even more and more and more, right? So for for the uh, second edition, it came out in 1988. Third edition was uh, 1994 or 1995, can't remember. And then, of course, you have the uh, current one, which is uh, talking about um, C++ 11, right? So this is these are some of the things that um, I've been doing, right? It's uh, uh, programming, programming language, and all that. But the problem with that, right, is something was missing, right? I didn't know what was missing, and you know, back then, right, I'll just be coding, uh, doing part-time programming, and all that, right? That's that's when I started my uh, uh, um, uh, uh, kind of non-technical technical programming and all that. So something was missing. And I thought, what was it? So I went to school. <laughs> I went to school, studied, you know, and, and there were a lot of really good, interesting things. Right. I love the, the, uh, um, the school itself and everything. And one of the things that they taught us was that not to look at things uh, in the language itself, but in the, in the uh, uh, what do you call that? In, in the, <laughs> shit, I can't remember. But, um, sorry? In the underlying, yeah, in the under underlying uh, concepts itself, right? So we don't look at things on the language itself where, oh, this is that, this is that, right? But we look at it from an uh, abstract uh, um, language itself. Not, oh, well, not a language, but a concept itself. And that really thought, thought me, right? Like, okay, that is very, very interesting. Let's do some more. So um, back back after um, you know after school and everything and, and so and so forth, right? I learned that there is such, such a thing called design patterns, and this is one of the books that um, you guys should actually get. Uh, it's a 1994 book. Uh, it's really really old, but it it's really helped me a lot, even until now, right? Uh, as a language itself, um, as a design pattern itself, right? Um, it can, uh, it, although it's written in C++ and small talk, but you can, you can uh, there are a lot of books that have uh, transitioned beyond that to like JavaScript and all that, right? So it's very useful and uh, yeah, it's quite um, good. Then back in 2009, I think, if I'm not wrong, right? Um, these part of it, right? Uh, um, what they call the software craftsman, right? Um, went up and said, hey, um, you know, we need to build good software. We need to good, build good well, not good, but great software itself. And how do we go, go to build them, right? There are four uh, um, guiding principles, and this is guiding only, right? Um, and they are not only working softer, uh, software, but well-crafted software. They're not, cons uh, they're not responding to change, but adding, steadily adding value, right? And so on and so forth. These is a manifesto that I do uh, uh, recommend to follow and all that. It's very simple. It's uh, four simple, uh, simple statements, but it helps a lot. And it's really, really uh, uh, been very, very uh, um, comfortable uh, or rather professional it itself, right? 
Then there's clean code itself. This is something that uh, clean code uh, uh, helps a lot in understanding the coding principles and all that, and how to change why you do something, when you do something, and so on and so forth, right? So these are some of the things that, um, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's quite good. Okay, then I have actually learned solid principles. How many of you know what solid principles are? Uh, very few people, right? But solid principles, it means, um, wait, I can't remember. <laughs> SRP, which is single responsibility principle. O is open close principle. L is Liskov's something principle. Substitution, Substitution principle, thank you. Uh, I is in, no, no, it's not. No, 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 it's uh, oh, something, right? <laughs> I can't remember, right? Huh? I, I, yeah, DI is dependency inversion. inversion. Uh, L, L, uh, I is, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> quick, Google that. Okay. But um, these principles, uh, I've actually learned them back in school itself, right? I've, I've actually learned that, but I didn't know that uh, to today itself, um, I started, I, I started uh, um, teaching people and realized that they don't know what solid principles are, right? So um, for those who don't know, go out and and Google that, right? <laughs> like uh, Suyen said, Google that. Yeah? <laughs> so if, if you don't know, but um, it's something that I feel that I've learned so long ago, but up to now, I still can teach and, and teach people these principles itself. Then of course, <laughs> somebody would not know, right? But there are uh, universal principles of design, universal principle. Oh, what's that? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Michael? <laughs> um, okay, okay. <laughs> so, the universal principles of design, uh, universal uh, methods of design and everyday things. These are some things that um, I think uh, as, a uh, as a developer, um, try to understand these principles. Uh, they are pretty new too, right? These principles, they are pretty new. But um, the one book that I really, really like that you should read, which is like a story itself, right? Is the Desi uh, Design of Everyday Things, right? By, by Don Norman. Um, this book, uh, I think there's, there's an update, there's a revised and update version of it. Um, two, to, two thirds of the book, it, it's new, and then after that he keeps repeating and repeating itself, it's just very boring. But yeah, but, but it means that uh, design of everyday things allows you to go out there and see, or, or rather see the small little things that go into design itself, right? For example, why would a door, right, uh, 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 have a handle over here and not a handle on the other side, right? Why, right? And the reason mainly is because one have a handle and one not is because the other side is push and the other side is pull, and that's why, right? But Think about it and try to understand all of these uh, uh, principles. And these are some of the principles that, uh, um, you know, that people have been taking in. And of course, right, computational thinking, which is very similar to, or rather is, exactly the same as her, right, which is algorithm thinking, right? So what I call computation thinking is 
um, taking a, 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 a problem, right, saying that it's, uh, uh, um, I don't know, like taking 1 plus 2 equals 3, right? So thinking that and understanding it from a top version, right, a 20,000 feet version, right, and just just uh, based, doesn't matter whether what language you are losing or what, what terms you're using, but take these concepts and flow with it, right? Can create your own language itself, right? For the computation thinking, it doesn't matter. But when you start thinking about it, you start understanding it a little bit more. And then after that, you can learn the language and use this computation thinking or this problem solving to understand or rather to, to meet the requirements, you know, or something like that, right? So that's where, where got me started into uh, teaching even more, okay? So what now? <laughs> What do I have now that, that I have to teach or rather learn from you guys, right? So from, uh, from teaching itself or rather um, uh, uh, for teaching itself, um, I, I started working for a consulting company, right? Uh, and one of the things that I am or, or like to do is these few things that I have uh, learned over the years, right? Including uh, 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 pair programming and all that. And I, I'm thinking of bringing more of these concepts to uh, uh, the lives that, that you guys are doing, right? Because I have been doing all this for more than 10 more years already, actually more than that, right? All the way from school itself until now, right? So pair programming, what exactly is pair programming? Anyone? <laughs> Don't know what pair programming is, right? So pair programming is um, two people working on a problem. Very simple, right? One person is the controller, the other person is the reader. Is it the reader? Yeah, or something like that, right? So that's pair programming. You can learn from it for a few hours, right? Or rather, do it for a few hours. We actually, we actually do it for every day, right? Pair programming every day. And it doesn't mean that you cannot Google that, right? Go ahead, Google that. Because a, pro, uh, a, a problem depends on Google, right? Um, sometimes. And then other times, some, uh, the other pair knows what it is and able to uh, tell you, right? And then sometimes I'm the controller and I know how to do this and I tell them how to do that. So in a way, you are gaining more experience doing pair programming, right? The, and the other one, finite state machines at work. Every, anybody knows what finite state machines are? Absolutely nobody. Okay, so, so for, for finite state machines, uh, um, Google that. <laughs> okay, um, and uh, Swagger, Swagger.io, Anybody knows that? No? Okay. So Sega.io is, um, uh, uh, um, oh, what's it called? It's, it's an API, yeah. It's something like an do API documentation, uh, um, but not exactly. Yeah, it, it's a tool, right, to help you do uh, uh, a swagger. Uh, um, all of this, yeah. <laughs> uh, compiler construction. Anybody knows what compiler construction is? 
Yeah. So compiler construction is taking the, the compiler itself and, and break it down into different parts. And, and the first part is really um, uh, uh, syntax, sy syntax, uh, um, sy syntax control, syntax. Yeah, yeah, correct. AST and all that, right? So with an AST, with a uh, uh, um, context and all that, we are able to break it down to three different parts of computer, con uh, computer construction, right? Three parts of it. Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, so, so go search. <laughs> That's what I would say. And then the last thing that I'm thinking of, right, is prep, uh, which is uh, functional programming, okay? So functional programming, functional programming is something uh, uh, that is like, say, for example, like Elixir. That is what my uh, company is doing right now. And uh, a lot of new de uh, developers are uh, trying to understand functional programming. So for me, I have to teach them what functional programming is, right? And all the, the functional steps, all right? Um, so for functional programming, it's very different from what you guys are familiar with, your object-oriented, right? Somehow or other, object-oriented has been, has always taken over, right? So in functional programming, we are, we are talking about um, functional uh, uh, um, way of doing things, okay? And there is more. But there is so much more that, uh, um, that I'm, th I'm teaching in the company uh, um, that, you know, it takes a lot of time to do this. So with that, <laughs> I'm so tired right now. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Uh, I hope... <laughs> I hope you understand all of that. If you don't, there's always Google, right? <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.